Hiya, welcome back. Whilst researching for the clutch, I came across an article in the XL forum on sportstopedia.com, the link below in the description. And it was saying that if you've got the clutch apart or you've got the casing off and you're doing the clutch, it might be a good idea to upgrade the clutch adjustment screw bearing from the ordinary deep groove bearing, part number 8885, to an angular contact bearing because it can accommodate better axial loads. So I've put the link below in the description of this video so that you can check that out for yourself. So they suggest replacing it with a 7002 TVP angular contact bearing. And this is the details from the website that I bought the bearing from. Whether or not you do this is entirely up to you. I've chosen to do it and I'll give some information about the difference between the two bearings at the end of the video. But as I say, it's entirely up to you whether you do it or not. But nevertheless, this is for information and entertainment. Now I've got the cover off anyway to do the clutch, so it seemed a good idea to do the angular contact bearing at the same time. So the release plate is held in with this retaining ring. which isn't going to be the easiest of things to get out. There we go, fully expecting it to fly across the garage. There we go, good. And then that just lifts out. Now that bearing looks absolutely fine to me. There's no play in there or anything. But as I'm doing the clutch, and an angular uh, contact bearing seems to be quite sensible. And I have seen these things uh, fall apart and I've got this open to do the clutch. I might as well do the bearing. And I've got a 30 mil, 30 mil socket there and a 17 mil there. So the 17 just fits in there and the 30 just goes over there. that gets the bearing out and then that's bearings just held in with this little clip and it just goes in that groove there and then that bit just pushes out and you pop a new bearing in so here's my new bearing and it's important to get good ones so this is a fag and also it's important to orientate them the right way so there's a, a sort of a fat bit and a thin bit and then a fat bit and a thin bit and it has to go so that the fat bit goes into the recess so that's like that and then that'll just push in and that just taps in that's a 22 mil socket there it's nicely seated and then that just slots in there and then we put the circlip back in the groove and then just pop it back in I've put a bit of uh, grease on there with the Formula X 
and then just reinsert the retaining ring. making sure it's properly seated. All right, that's done. Okay, that's it. I hope you found that useful. Uh, I am nowhere near an engineer, so I don't know whether or not a uh, angular contact bearing or a deep groove bearing is the best. The standard Harley one, which is equivalent to a 6200 bearing is a deep groove bearing. And I've just fitted a angular contact bearing in. Now I, I did think why didn't Harley do that in the first place if it's better but then also I did think why did Harley leave the spring plate in without redesigning it if it would be better to redesign it so I don't know jury's out as far as I'm concerned I don't know the answer there's plenty of stuff online here's a very brief difference between the angular contact bearing and the deep groove bearing and it, is, it really is entirely up to you whether or not you decide to do this I have because I think the, the Screaming Eagle clutch has got a stiffer spring and I think this is a sort of a better solution to the bearing than the deep groove. But as I say, I'm not an engineer and I do not know. So that's your choice to make. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you next time. Cheerio.